Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, uh, my name is Willem Boscher from one of the directors at Trident, uh, looking after a couple of things, but today it's all about supply chain and specifically sales and operations planning. The objective of today is to introduce to you really two things. One is um, the Anaplan platform, and uh, Dr. Deborah Pike is going to speak about that. And then uh, what we've done at Trident is we have modeled a sales and operations planning application um, leveraging the Anaplan platform. And so today it's really just about providing a bit of insight and an overview of that solution. And so before we get into the introductions of this, so um, this is really a, a, an objective here is to extend what we are doing for finance. And so we've been doing finance analytical solutions for a long time for the office of the CFO. And um, our next generation of growth is gonna come from extending what we're doing for finance into the operations of business and specifically supply chain. And some illustrations today that um, if organizations do this very well, um, obviously these are the things that really matter because these are the sort of activities in every business that will then generate the evidential financial outcomes that most of us are looking for. So without further ado, let's get into the content. Next slide, please, Greg. So uh, just a brief introduction. Today, you're going to hear from um, Ahmed Shivan and Greg Small. These are the two solution leads within Trident, um, looking after the supply chain initiative. Uh, Ahmed is based out of Singapore. He's a master and a planner. He's been working with Anaplan for many, many years, and uh, something like 18 years, if I'm uh, correct, uh, specifically within the supply chain industry. Um, Anaplan has architected a Trident application for us on the Anaplan platform, and he's going to do a live demonstration showcasing certain aspects of this application for you. Greg is going to introduce you to the application and talk a bit about Trident and the challenges that's often faced by supply chain professionals. Uh, Greg has joined the team about a year ago and also a subject matter expert in the field of supply chain. Uh, Huang is a super smart person in our team. He's got a PhD in computer science, a solution lead for our data science practice. And you'll see aspects of the solutions that really gets into the, the more complexities of machine learning and artificial intelligence and how we're leveraging technology to um, deal with some of the high volume forecasting activities that people and humans just do not really have capacity for. And then also, I'm very grateful um, to have uh, Dr. Deborah Pike with us today. Um, Deborah is going to really introduce to you um, the overall uh, message of connected planning and how the Anaplan platform supports um, the overall, I guess, strategy of Anaplan to be the number one planning application in the world. Um, and specifically today, we're going to talk about just how we extend um, the Office of CFO financial outcomes into the supply chain by looking at aspects like uh, demand planning and supply planning and and everything that sort of supports those key activities in the business. So Deborah, thank you so much for doing this and welcome to be part of the team. So what I'm going to do next is really just um, set some expectations in terms of what we're going to do and then hand over to Greg to get started with item number one. So um, first, we're going to just have a look at some of the key SNOP challenges that we get from our clients and our organizations we work with. Um, and hopefully some of those will resonate. It will be always um, welcome and appreciated if you can give us some feedback in terms of how these could or are relevant to your lives. And, uh, uh, and of course, if anything significant needs to be addressed in addition, then we would love to hear from you. We'll talk about the purpose of the solution and what we hope to achieve. And briefly mentioned, it's about extending what we do already. Uh, but we can obviously drill down today on specifics of supply chain. And after that, Greg will hand over to uh, Deborah to talk with us, to talk to us about specifically about the technology platform. So Anaplan is a leading planning application, been around since 2006, uh, well regarded within the uh, industry, uh, well over 100 clients here in ANZ. And, um, and we'll, we're looking forward to just hear a bit, a bit more about the overall message of connected planning. 
And then we'll switch gears by showcasing some specifics of the application that we've developed and then wrap it up with some questions at the end and, um, and, and finish off with a trident introduction about our role in a, in a journey like this with our clients. So without further ado, thank you so much for joining us. And Greg, um, if you can take over, that'll be great. Thanks, mate. Thanks, thanks William. Right now, supply chains are facing many challenges. Successfully navigating and making quick and decisive course corrections in a world of constant disruption is key to an organization's success. What do I actually mean by constant disruption? Let's take a few moments to consider a few recent examples. Probably the one that comes to mind to most is the global pandemic, where family, friends, schools, and our healthcare system has been deeply impacted. As we speak, there are thousands of ships anchored off Shanghai with China still in lockdown, which is impacting supply chains globally. The recent rain events, not to forget only in 2019, we had devastating fires. Geopolitical events like the war in Ukraine, which is impacting raw material shortages, food and gas supply. Mounting pressure on inflation, which will put mesh pressure on margins. Now, there are probably people in this audience that have actually never been through inflation before. From the changing nature of work to the great resignation and talent shortages, albeit cybersecurity. There are many, many other. These are just examples uh, that have happened. They're once in a hundred year events that have happened at the some, same time, and in some instances, multiple times. It's how we react to them that matters. So what has been some of the flow and effects to supply chain? I'm sure most in the audience would have, would have experienced one or all of these. Firstly, port congestion. Throughout 2021, there's been historic wait time for ships headed into ports across the world. Rising freight costs, trucks and intermodal transport costs received, reached historic highs in 2020. From 20 to 21, spot prices leaped by double digits across the board labor and material shortages. While in many cases, other cases, companies have been left with excess inventory with expiring shelf life. Restructuring supply chains. Time will heal some global supply chains. For many, however, the time to restructure has come. 2022 will be a year of pivoting on companies seeking more reliable means of procurement, whether that means reshoring, diversifying suppliers, or newer carrier agreements depends on the nature of the supply chain and the intent. And finally, struggles with demand forecasting. The past 24 months of data is unreliable and for all intents, um, skewed. 2020 global shutdown skewed supply data beyond recognition. And in 21, we saw a rebanding and elastic data that makes it relatively unreliable as a standard for future forecasting. The result, supply chain leaders have no true benchmark for looking ahead. And while unprecedented demand continues, moderating that demand amidst workflow parameters, legacy software and systems remains a challenge. This is where this solution comes in. All of these challenges add up for a tumultuous 2022 for supply chains. And while the persistent struggle is something companies relish, it breeds opportunity for a smarter assessment of critical ops. Or as the saying goes, never let a good crisis go to waste by Winston Churchill. Leaders need to be diverse in recognizing the need for change and be willing to break down and rebuild partnerships that no longer serve as reliable. Leaders need, leaders need to have robust tools, systems and processes in place to give them real time information to make informed decisions as new circumstances arise. And I don't think we fully understand what the new normal is just yet. Now is the chance to rebuild supply chains, reassess budgeting and planning protocols, invest in new technology, and in course, identify and retain leaders who understand the changing uh, dynamics of the current economic environment. So why is connected planning so important? I'm gonna go through five of the top benefits we see as being, uh, as being important to all organizations. First and foremost, instant collaboration. Everyone is on the same page immediately. There is no need for back and forth email threads. 
increased transparency between departments. With increased transparency between departments and accurate forecasting, ensures stock levels are never too low or never too high. Plus, the whole business has a common understanding of the life cycle of the product and how it needs to be managed. SNOP can ensure your team always make informed decisions about a product's supply and demand. It provides greater accuracy and transparency across the business, making it easier to relay up to date information. More informed decisions about a product's demand and supply. A major benefit of SOP is having an accurate view of exactly what volumes are in inventory, production, or in transport at any point of time. With this information to hand, planners can quickly and easily make instant adjustments across the supply chain to, to meet the challenges in demand or decide to do what to do about supply constraints. Without this, you risk misalignment across departments, inaccurate estimates of consumer dam, demand, and wasted resources from having cash tied up in excess stock that has expired or become obsolete, or even worse, lost revenues from not having the right stock in the right place in the right time. The contrasting view is a clear view of what is happening across the entire demand and supply chain, and that puts you in control. You will always have the latest data from across the entire process so you can respond to change when you need it. Fourthly, thriving, better, better sales and budget forecasting. Thriving businesses usually have the right tools in place that allow them to adapt quickly to new markets and ever-changing consumer demand. Without a flexible collaborative SNOP, you risk competitors profiting while you miss out. No matter what industry you're in, there's always another business ready to provide the same service to your customers and fill the gap. Therefore, it's critical that simple business expectations are met by accurate forecasting. Connected SNOP gives you the ability to make more informed decisions about your products, provides accurate product data on product data performance and better forecasting. This way you can remain flexible enough to adapt to an ever-changing demand and find those new niches. While you're bogged down in your Excel-based model, better resource companies are looking for better sales avenues. And finally, streamlined processes will improve overall customer experience. Suppliers and customers will all benefit if you have real-time connected sales and operational planning. As deadlines are met, products are always available when and where they need to be. Customer satisfaction will flow. Implementing SNOP correctly can be part of a wider digital transformation in your business. Real-time connected supply planning will remove inefficiencies and transform your business. Connected sales on operational plan enables management to collaborate with a common understanding of the issue and give them the ability to act quick. This will undoubtedly improve customer experience. Gartner defines a supply chain planning solution as a platform providing technology support that allows a company to manage, link, align, collaborate and share planning data across the extended supply chain. And this is exactly what Anaplan is designed for, designed to optimise and integrate planning across an organisation. And this is why companies choose to use Anaplan. Anaplan has been consistently ranked by Gartner think, since 2017 in the leader quadrant and most recently in the supply planning quadrant information that was released in the past week. Uh, Anaplan is in the leader quadrant there for supply planning. The solution that Anaplan provides and the solution that our partners like Trident are building out is sitting on this capability. It allows organisations to connect, to interconnect and to make sure they are sharing that, platform, that information across the organisation built on the Anaplan platform. The platform allows businesses to own the technology, to own the solution, and to have that flexibility of being able to enhance it within their own team rather than relying on IT folk, and really to eliminate those spreadsheets that are um, virulent within organisations. Uh, built on technology that is rapid to bring information through residing in the memory, allows organisations to use Anaplan to perform and provide scenario models to compare what potential results could be before they lock in decisions. 
and really we ensure that customer first and we do that in concert with Trident, make sure that the customer's needs and objectives are met by the projects that we implement. If you could move to the next slide, Greg. As we know, most organisations have transactional systems and they meet the needs of sales and marketing, operations, finance, HR, information technology, and they provide that ERP focus or the um, CRM focus or the specific transactional focus, but it leaves a gap in the centre and that's that area of sharing information across the organisation to plan activities, to collaborate and to share information outside of the immediate organisation across the supply chain. Now, this gap is normally filled in most organisations by a myriad of Excel spreadsheets, if you would Thank you. Uh, Excel spreadsheets and other databases, and of course, using email. And this encourages silos within organisation. It takes away that opportunity for connected planning that we're all moving forward towards. It also takes away line of sight and causes errors in information. Now, Anaplan addresses this challenge by providing a platform that uses the information in the transaction system, leaving the transaction system free to do what it's good at, gives real-time visibility and allows agile collaboration across the organisation to enhance planning and analytics. If we could move to the next slide, thank you. The way we at Anaplan and our partners like Trident look at the world of connected planning, it's cells in a honeycomb, which really interrelate to form an overarching solution. And the area that we're particularly focused in, those lovely pinky boxes down the, the bottom right-hand side of the screen there. The way that Gartner looks at supply planning, it's fund supply to align decision-making across the organisation. And because we're looking at the world as a series of honeycombs, that interrelatedness, that connectedness between the cells allows us to really look at the financial impact across an organisation and have that analysis and planning throughout the organisation, aligning decisions across the enterprise. We're not working in that silo that would have existed in the Excel world. We bring into that then the addition of artificial intelligence and advanced analytics. We also add to that the digital supply chain twin, integrating planning and business decision making and allowing that continuous planning, which are the other components of supply planning that Gartner's looking for when they're looking for leaders in this space. Uh, what our friends from Trident are going to take us through now is the way that they have addressed this sales and operations planning solution, building on that existing Anaplan platform. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Deb. So why did we choose these partners? Firstly, um, Deb's touched on Anaplan's recent Garda leading contract for the supply chain. To put it simply, Anaplan is a leader in the field of supply chain solutions. Snowflake. In 2021, the overall amount of data, data generated in the world was estimated to be around 79 zettabytes. To try and understand how large that is, we usually talk about things in terabytes. A zettabyte is one terabyte by three additional powers larger. With this explosion of data growth, we are continually seeing customizers customers standardize in a couple of key areas, regardless of the industry they're actually in. Organizations are consistently choosing Snowflake Data Clouds as the standard for data lake, data warehouses, machine learning, and data strategy. Now, let me take you through and give you some of the, so the solution highlights. Firstly, uh, the statistical sales for forecasting using Trident and our SAS machine learning including multiple algorithms and best fit identification for intelligent forecasting. We're gonna spend some time on this in the next slide to give you a greater impact of and how this will impact your business, but it's certainly a significant game changer. Product life cycle management for the introduction of new products and the ability to set end of life terms. Top down, bottom up sales forecast variance analysis. Marketing and promotional planning with the ability to uplift by SKU, which is so important to many. Synchronize the supply planning 
with production and ordering and, and allocation optimization. And we spent a whole lot of time on the user interface, which are purpose built to support the collaboration and consensus between sales, finance, and the demand teams. You're gonna see examples of lean inventory and projections using the ABC, um, easy simula simulation and scenario across the supply chain, and executive dashboards for communication of the result. The solution architecture consists of three coordinating technology from end-to-end -end solution. Now, Deb has previously covered the, the head of plan honeycomb. The solution addresses the, the significant processes in your business. It provides you solutions to manage your pain points and assist you negating some of the challenges I spoke about earlier. That is key to many on the call. And having sat in your chair for many years, I know how important these pain points are. We know how it touches, how it's touched the supply chain in 22 and what companies are looking for. Now, one of the challenges I spoke about earlier was demand forecasting and the impact of the disruption we've had, which is why we've built and incorporated AI data. Historical data is usually stored in a modern cloud-based system, database systems, i.e. Snowflake. The sales data, along with additional feature, including market data, holidays, weather, promotions, can then be processed by Snowpark in a database environment to build and deploy forecasting model for future demand. The key advantage of using Snowpark within Snowflake is the minimizing the movement of data outside of the database, hence the increase of efficiency and security. Data is then transformed and run through the predictive engine uh, to generate deployed models or to generate a sales forecast for the next period, whether it be months, quarters, or years. Uh, forecast results and any additional required data can then be loaded into the main unifies for the connected planning. Now, the Trident solution uses three different forecasting approach. Firstly, it's statistical multivariate regression, and that's a single, it's a method that is a single statistical model to learn and predict all SKUs at the same time. Ensemble univariate regression, um, which in itself, um, is, uses a different time series of regression algorithms to generate forecasts for each skew. And lastly, the deep new, new neural networks. And the key about this advanced forecasting model is to learn the dependencies between skews and predict all skews at the date time. The advantages of the Trident solution is a fully customizes, customizable solution, supporting its supporting enriched data feature the seamless integration within the data cloud, be it Snowflake or Azure. We have the option to deploy locally or on a cloud, and it's a very cost-effective solution. In summary, the results of using the Trident's forecast solution is increased accuracy, best, model fit, best fit modeling, faster processing, and a competitive cost for your business. Hi everyone. Uh, 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 my name is Amit. Uh, uh, before we go uh, through the application, let me explain you about the framework of this uh, application. So uh, this uh, SOP, SOP application is built for B2B type of uh, business, and uh, uh, we have considered liquor industries data for for our predictions from open source. And there are about 51 SKUs in the scope of this. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, scope of this application. Now, this application has um, uh, broadly uh, there are uh, these are the drivers which are which you can see here. Uh, this is based on these drivers like new product introduction, end of life, then demand planning, supply inventory and allocations planning, and then uh, finance uh, uh, SNOP, which is pre uh, and uh, executive SNOP. So, thanks, Greg. I will take over the screen now. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so uh, 
this is the landing page of this uh, of our application and uh, we can see here all these different sections like uh, uh, all these uh, supply chain drivers like not, uh, new product introduction end of life demand planning supply inventory planning allocations planning pre and uh, executive end of it so i'll start with new product uh, introduction and end of life so this uh, end of life and new product introduction they have a profound impact on supply chain uh, and and both uh, i mean end of life and uh, new product introduction uh, they helps business they help business to uh, innovate and uh, uh, basically uh, help to help to improve time to market so uh, for planner, it's very easy to manage uh, new product introduction and uh, end product end of life on this dashboard. So on the left hand side of this dashboard, we can see uh, there, there is a option to manage new product introduction. So it's uh, a very simple three step process for a planner to create a uh, new product. Just click here, add a new product and just select uh, the appro appropriate levels from the product hierarchy. Now in this demo, we, we, are, we are considering only category, but business may have multiple levels in the hierarchy like brand uh, uh, product family category etc and planner once planner updates these attributes and then effective date uh, the next step is just click here to create the product hierarchy so it's it's very simple uh, for a planner to uh, create the uh, new product hierarchy within an plan and now the next part is uh, the, the next step is uh, uh, Creating the generating the sales forecast for the new product. As we are aware that no product, new product usually doesn't have uh, doesn't doesn't have any uh, uh, historical uh, sales data. So that's why uh, planner has given uh, option to update the annual sales unit, and also there is an option for planner to collect, create the uh, uh, select the product from existing hierarchy. So what happens is uh, uh, this product's uh, uh, seasonality is is actually considered and uh, which is referred for uh, forecasting of uh, this new products forecast so so this is the seasonality pattern of the existing pro uh, uh, similar product and this is the forecast generated uh, uh, for the new product so it's very easy for a planner to generate the new product forecast just by referring to any existing uh, similar product on the right hand side uh, there is an option for planner to manage uh, product end of life so uh, Planner has option to select the product. So based on a uh, lot of parameters, if any product is not uh, performing well or uh, so, uh, or, or uh, having some issues like sales is going very down for that particular product, then planner can just select that product, just stick here to activate the end of life, update the start end rates, and that's it. So it's very easy uh, interface uh, where on the fly planner can update, uh, manage uh, production and in the flight. And this stage, uh, this step is very important before the SNOP cycle begins, managing this uh, NPI and EOL. The next key driver is uh, uh, of this application is demand planning. So, uh, so as as we are aware that demand planning is a very important. Uh, Part to any business because uh, it gives a, a, a with with the help of demand planning, business can identify the uh, risks and opportunities and advance and ultimately can grow the profitability. So let's view the first dashboard, which is uh, related to statistical forecasting. Okay, now uh, Anaplan has uh, uh, about thirty uh, rebuilt thirty statistical methods. Which are pre-built methods, and uh, which generates a pretty good uh, for uh, uh, with the help of which any business uh, or any uh, it generates a very good forecast accuracy. Uh, but still, there is an opportunity to uh, uh, improve the forecast accuracy by leveraging ML and AI capability. So, yeah, so in this, uh, uh, therefore, in this application or this application is connected with uh, Plan IQ and Trident's uh, uh, own IP. So uh, Plan IQ is basically uh, uh, intelligent uh, uh, forecasting uh, forecasting framework, uh, which delivers uh, uh, advanced uh, ML AI capabilities. And whereas uh, Trident's own IP uh, also delivers ML AI capabilities, but it, it delivers it uh, more efficiently, uh, efficiently and effectively. So um, um, 
as, and, and as a result, you know, as a result, business gets wide range of uh, predictions generated, uh, uh, generated, and get uh, and business can get a very good forecast accuracy out of this exercise. So let's uh, uh, also. I just would like to mention here that this plan IQ and Trident IP solution are optional add-ons on this application because Anaplan already has thirty uh, pre-built statistical uh, methods on this application. So if we observe this dashboard, these are the algorithms uh, which are used in this application. And uh, uh, basically, first three algorithms, uh, they are part of Plan IQ, then the rest four or five algorithms are part of Trident IP, and rest all statistical methods are part of uh, Anaplan's uh, pre-built statistical method. For a planner, uh, it is very easy to import export data from from and to Anaplan. Say, for example, uh, the latest historical data has to be uploaded uh, on an Aplan platform. Then planner has to just click this button through which import and export is managed very easily. Now let's look at the outcome of this uh, entire exercise. Exercise. So uh, uh, if we can see this pie chart, we can observe that there are about 20, uh, as I mentioned, there are 51 SKUs in the scope. Out of 51 SKUs, 22 SKUs, uh, they provide the uh, uh, best uh, uh, precise predictions using Trident's IP. Uh, however, uh, 22 SKUs uh, they they provide uh, uh, better forecast accuracy using Plan IQ and rest seven uh, SKUs they provide better accuracy using uh, Anaplan's previous stat method. So we consider a lot of parameters uh, uh, while while deriving on the best fit method. Uh, we consider error and uh, bias and logging par parameters while doing this. So let's do a deep diving into the data now. This is the table here at the bottom. And these are all 51 SKUs. And these are the best fit methods, which are selected by system, considering a lot of uh, 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 things, as I mentioned, error and all these things. And this is the forecast generated, best fit forecast generated for the uh, SNOP cycle. So now we have uh, seen uh, uh, how the statistical forecasting uh, is generated or the capability of statistical forecasting. Now, uh, in, in a business, uh, you know, there are uh, different functions like finance, sales, and marketing. So uh, finance, sales, and marketing, they can create their own version of forecast and they can submit to demand planner and which gets connected uh, with the consensus demand plan. So I'll go on this dashboard. So uh, consensus demand plan, uh, this dashboard which we have created is a very powerful dashboard because uh, this, this actually, this dashboard is very powerful because this connects uh, supply chain planning and uh, finance planning together. So, uh, so on the right hand side of this dashboard, we can see all the supply chain and finance driver are, uh, drivers are available through which planner can change and adjust these drivers. But on the, uh, and, and on the left hand side, the planner can actually review uh, previous year sales, backlog, and then if, if any CRM opportunity, then uh, also the planner can also review uh, forecasts submitted by different, different functions like sales, finance, marketing, then there is a, a window to review uh, inventory snapshot and different line items of costs like uh, labor costs, handling costs, and at the end there is a revenue and gross profit. So all the information is available on this dashboard. Now, uh, say if a uh, uh, sales team would like to actually, uh, if demand planner actually would like to select different scenarios submitted by different functions, say. Uh, now sales. Uh, now let's talk about. Now let's uh, focus on the sales scenario. So for November 21, the uh, sales team has submitted forecast of 84,752. Now this is the best scenario, and if uh, Tana selects scenario three, this number has changed to 61,524. So this dashboard has a feature or capability to select multiple scenarios uh, from, uh, from different, different drivers. As, uh, as we can see over here, 
uh, uh, as, as we can observe here, it, it's uh, uh, like from February 22, uh, businesses anticipating additional 3PL cost. And this is because there is a, a there is an issue with plant capacity, storage, storage capacity, and the utilization is more than 100%. So as I mentioned earlier that demand planning actually it gives a, a, a business can identify a risk in advance. So this is one of the example how business can identify the risk. So now business can take a call, a strategic call, whether how uh, uh, this cost can be eliminated or can be reduced. In, uh, yeah. So there are other uh, drivers for COX also. So like uh, planner would like to uh, create one scenario that, okay, what will happen if the labor cost increases? So let me just uh, update this labor cost. So, so currently it is 11,200 and let me make it to one. So labor cost has increased and become 56,000 now and this has uh, affected the gross profit also and yeah so actually uh, this dashboard helps uh, demand planner uh, uh, from demand fulfillment point of view and profitability point of view also so another important uh, and very powerful capability of this dashboard is constant demand so uh, in many cases uh, planners struggle with uh, you know uh, converting uh, it's a very big struggle to convert unconstrained demand to constrained demand and it takes a lot of time because a planner has to coordinate with a lot of uh, 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 stakeholders. So if we can see here now, uh, the, for November 1, the demand planner forecast is 56,000, which is editable. So demand planner actually uh, can make a final demand plan over here, consensus demand plan over here. And this is the constrained demand plan. So now let's uh, have a look at uh, production planning because this line over here is connected with Anaplan's uh, uh, Anaplan optimizer, uh, which is uh, uh, which works on the linear programming principle. So I'll open this dashboard. So as you can see here, uh, there is one button on the top, and uh, 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 all the inputs and uh, constraints which are required for production planning are updated over here, like say demand. Then production line feasibility, line wise throughput, product profitability, line capacity, product line profitability. All these details are updated. And once these details are updated, uh, planner has to just click this button. And this updates the consensus demand plan, constraint demand plan. Now let, let me change this to 10 million and check. So we can see that there is a alert here for inventory, but still we'll check and try to convert the plan to unconstrained plan to constrained demand plan. So now we'll check. Okay, now we can see here the 56,000 has changed and it's now 8 million. It means that demand can, uh, demand planner can only plan 8 million quantity for this product. And this demand is now converted to constrained demand plan. So yes, so we have seen this uh, capability here of uh, consensus demand plan. The next uh, section is uh, the next key driver is supply supply planning. We have already seen production planning, so I'll jump to production scheduling. Production scheduling is uh, once the production plan is done at very high level, the next step is basically production scheduling. So production scheduling is done at very detailed level, at day level, and like. Uh, planner has to input the production from production to and other details and uh, and then just uh, by production line and multiple scenarios also can be created uh, for production scheduling on this dashboard uh, on the right hand side we, we can see the gantt chart which is a very powerful because uh, with the help of uh, gantt chart uh, planner can actually control and optimize the production plan i'll explain how it can be done so let's select this product um, the first product and the production is uh, from and to, to are updated. So the production run is happening from 9th November to 19th November. So let me change this Gantt chart, position of this Gantt chart. So you can see here that production from and uh, to dates have changed. Uh, from 9 it has become 12 now. At the same time, if planner has to reduce it, 
So from 22, now the production to, uh, to date has uh, become 20. So this kind of uh, uh, powerful capability this dashboard has and uh, on Anaplan platform. The next step is uh, connecting this uh, 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 production, detailed production scheduling and uh, to, to downstream at bomb level. So all this mapping, it can be done uh, on this dashboard, like uh, what is the bill of material quantity, supplier, lead time per month, and all these things. And uh, and, and with, uh, the, uh, with the help of this, uh, planner actually can manage uh, supply scheduling and supplier order management. The next part is, uh, so we have seen already uh, 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 production scheduling, and now we are into inventory analysis, because inventory also one important uh, uh, factor of uh, supply chain. So on this dashboard, planner will be able to see uh, the details of inventory projection. And on the right hand side, there are some alerts and indicators. Uh, if there are any uh, alerts, it will be uh, the color will change and it will just pop up here. Like okay, now the non-moving non inventory has gone very high. So some action has to be taken. So these kind of indicators are also available on this dashboard. The next next part is inventory segmentation. So from service level point of view, uh, it, it's very easy for planner to set the uh, uh, service, service level policy at very high level. So uh, there is a quadrant and ABC and XYZ uh, classification is done over here, like uh, all these percentages are editable. And based on this uh, quadrant, all these uh, 51 SKUs are actually uh, uh, categorized uh, for this XYZ and ABC analysis. The next part is uh, allocations. So we have uh, completed the supply planning, demand planning of drivers. The next part is uh, allocations. This is to balance uh, supply and demand and then allocate uh, allocate uh, the demand to all customers. So as we can see, uh, as we have seen the production planning, uh, it, it is actually is, uh, powered by an plan optimizer and this uh, allocations, those are also automated uh, and powered by. Uh, so these are the inputs like demand by customer, then supply plan, then customer plan feasibility, and there are some constraints like dispatch capacity, period by period by plant, all these things are updated here, and profitability per unit. Planner has to just click this button, and at the bottom, you can see here this allocation, optimal allocation is done. So on the fly, uh, allocations. The next part is actually uh, scenario scenario planning. Say now that there is one option which we have seen like auto allocation, but at the same time, uh, planner would like to compare the multiple scenarios. Like this is the column for uh, uh, allocation based on the ratio, and uh, this is optimized allocation or system recommended allocation based on some objective uh, like uh, increasing profitability or uh, customer priority or product profitability, whatever it may be. And this is the difference in both the scenarios. Now, uh, but at the end, planner would like to override this allocation uh, and finalize it. So there is an option for planner to override this. Say for example, so here, final allocation, and then click on override. So what happens is at the in the last column the final allocation is captured. Uh, one interesting thing is after the allocations are done, these allocations are connected with uh, again uh, fleet optimization and cost optimization part. So there is a module at the back end which actually recommends how many fleets of what size are required to fulfill the demand of this customer, say customer two, and uh, what will be the uh, uh, Fred, uh, Fred forecast by each fleet size. So this is also a very interesting feature in this application. And if I just remove the tick here, from 12 it has become five. So it, it calculates and optimizes the freight cost and fleets dynamically. So we have covered a locations part. Uh, now let's jump to pre and executive SNOP. So, uh, pre SNOP is basically uh, it helps organization uh, you know to identify the gaps and disconnects and uh, create the strategies at a very high level 
and it basically uh, it's basically a high level view for gross profit and uh, cox and the next part is uh, executive s and or finance uh, finance uh, s and so this is the final phase of s and where uh, uh, where all the data and plans are brought together and uh, final uh, goal is actually uh, yeah so the, and basically business uh, can finalize the operational plan uh, like we can see here that uh, lines product lines are like line d is not utilized so either uh, the decision can be taken okay whether to shut down this line or uh, add some products on this line such kind of decisions can be taken at very high end strategic levels so this uh, completes the demonstration of this app I'll, I'll just hand over to william now Well done, everybody. Thank you so much for doing that. Thanks, Amit. It's uh, it's quite astonishing what you guys have done in uh, just a couple of days in terms of getting this prepared and organized. Um, I think if you can just go down to the final slide so we can wrap this up for everybody. There we are. Okay, so hopefully that was very uh, valuable um, use of your time. Thank you so much for attending. I think just to wrap up a little bit about Trident and who we are, what we do. Um, so there's sort of four panels. Yeah, that's probably probably of relevance. I'm not going to go through each on every one of these boxes, but um, I guess the first thing in terms of our credentials, we've been around since 2007. We operate across Asia Pacific with main offices in Sydney, Melbourne, Singapore, and Perth, and a few other sort of satellite locations where we have some staff. Uh, we're a business that commits to support everything we deliver for our clients and uh, that support is available on a 24 by 5 network. We've got some uh, fantastic people that's based in Cape Town, South Africa, helping us with support in other time zones. I guess the blue bar at the top sort of um, briefly explains all the solutions we get ourselves involved with. As I said, we're a business that's 100% focused on business analytics of all kinds. Um, the business organized or started itself in 2007, specifically focused on the FP&A space. And then the second box there is what today was all about, supply chain, and specifically uh, the space of SNOP. Um, and then a, a, a myriad of other things that we help our clients with uh, in terms of just using data to make better decisions. Uh, the dark purple on the left uh, briefly talks about the approach we take. Uh, we're very proud of our history in terms of providing very good advice to our, our clients. We uh, like to earn your trust and earn your respect um, by doing the right things by our customers. Um, we go through a design process and the design process is not just the technical design of the solution. It's really just helping you setting up your environment in order to own, maintain and really use applications such as this. And that involves setting up pro, uh, support processes, setting up um, appropriate data processes and so forth. We obviously help with the software licensing, the solution implementation, we train and enable your team. And then as I said already, we are committed to, to support everything we deliver for our clients. Uh, today, there was a big focus on Anaplan. We're a proud Anaplan partner. Uh, but we also complement our technology offerings with a myriad of other solutions that could be of relevant to you. And um, we've briefly touched on the, the value of supporting the Anaplan platform with products like Snowflake um, to deal with some of the higher data volume and transaction details that we might often need to do some of the more sophisticated forecasting that you've seen today. Um, so with that in mind, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope it was worth, uh, worth your while. Um, if you need to get in touch with us, the phone numbers are on the screen uh, or feel free to reach out via the email address or any of the contacts at Trident that you know. Um, team, thank you so much for doing this and have a good afternoon, everybody. We just have a few questions. Um, the first one is, 
Um, how much does it cost? Willem, you are probably the best person to answer this, I think. I always get this question. It's a fun one to have. Um, look, the, the good news is that um, uh, I'm going to sound a bit like in fear of sounding like a politician, but we do need to spend a bit of time with people to to give you an accurate number, right? But the good news is we're not talking millions and millions of dollars anymore. These sorts of solutions, as little as five years ago, were exclusively really affordable by the big end of town. That is no longer the case. Um, the makeups of the cost components is really uh, the software platforms that are in play. And in this case, there's an Anaplan licensing subscription cost that needs to be worked out. Generally works on in a per user basis. So we do need to have an understanding of how many people would typically be involved on your site in order to give you an accurate cost on the software. Um, and then there's obviously an implementation perspective, which is the, the larger part of the cost. Normally the implementations would be about somewhere in the vicinity of six to nine months. Um, with two, in a worst case scenario, three consultants working with you. Um, and then support really just depends on um, your approach to support in terms of whether you wish to build internal capacity um, or whether you prefer to just outsource the, the pain of looking after a, a system of this nature to a business like us. Generally, the cost is neutral in terms of whether you need to hire an FTE and pay for the salary and management costs of that FTE or whether you just allocate those funds to a party such as ourselves. So support is generally sort of a, a easy business case. It's more to do with your preferred approach. But we do need to work with you in order to help you support a business case. Um, but we're talking generally in the vicinity of hundreds to thousands of dollars, not millions. Um, any other questions, Kelly? Yes. Um, how much time is required for this sort of Anaplan implementation? I think Amit might be best to answer. Yeah, Amit, I think it's probably you the best qualified person in the group to tell us. Yeah. I, I sort of briefly mentioned six to nine months, but please correct me if you think I'm wrong. Yeah, it, it can be shorter than that also. It depends on the complexity of the business. So it can be up to four to five months and maximum six to nine months. Thank you. And one more, which is, does it integrate with SAP? Yes, we, yes, we can integrate it with SAP. Okay. That looks like all the questions I, I can see coming in. If anyone doesn't have any more, I'm happy to end this session, Ellie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye.